the equation we're using is called the ideal gas law equation. And it's using all the pressure, the volume, the temperature in an equation, but we only have to use one of each of those. So we're also going to throw in a couple other things, okay? So this is the ideal gas law equation, PV equals nRT, um, where it includes one more bit of information than what we had before, and that's the amount, so the number of moles, okay? Um, I sometimes call it the Pervnerd equation because it looks like Pervnerd. So if you like to call it that, then you are more than welcome to. Um, so it includes pressure, volume, temperature, and N, which is moles. And then it also has R. R is the constant, so it's going to be the same number every single time. Okay? Um, the units on that number don't really matter. Oh, it's not calibrated. There we go. Uh, so, if you want to like circle that or whatever, I'll be giving that to you on the test, but you just have to remember that's what you plug in when you see R, okay? Um, so, let's go through, because this equation, like up to this point, the only thing that's had to be specifically something was temperature, but now we have some other things that have to be specifically the some, some certain sort of units, okay? So we're going to go through that. Um, pressure is first. Looking at this, uh, this unit on this R value, what is the pressure going to have to be? Anybody want to take a guess? Like if it's liters atmospheres over Kelvin mole, what's the pressure unit there? ATM. So that means that our pressure has to be an ATM for this equation to work. So if it's not, then you're going to have to do like you did in Chapter 13 and convert it so that it is ATM. Okay. Then the P or the V is still volume, and that's still liters. Okay. N is our number of moles. So, like, I might try to trick you and give you grams. You have to convert it to moles first using our mole maps from like chapter 10 style, and then you can plug in to N. R is this constant, and then temperature. It's going to be like before, it has to be in Kelvin. Okay? Um, so, those are our stipulations. So, this time, like, you only have one set of everything. So, once you figure out what the pressure is, you're done figuring out pressures. Once you figure out the moles, you're done figuring out moles. But, you just have to make sure everything's in the correct units that it's supposed to be. Okay? So, we have two equations. One, that's like the front side of the paper that I gave you. And then one, that's similar to the back side of the paper I gave you, okay? Um, so we're going to do those, and then we'll finish up for today. So the first one, at 34 degrees Celsius, the pressure inside a nitrogen-filled tennis ball with a volume of 0 0.148 liters is 212 kilopascals. How many moles of nitrogen gas are in the tennis ball? So I'm just listing everything out for our equation because we're using the PV equals NRT equation, okay, um, to plug in here. So, are we given a pressure for this problem? Yeah, what's the pressure? 212 kPa. Are we given a volume? Yes. <coughs> the point 0.148 liters. Okay. Um, R is not given in the problem, but we know it because it's on your paper. It's 0 0.08206. Are we given any number of moles? No. Is <coughs> moles what we're solving for? Yes, because it says right here how many moles. So I'm going to just put my question mark next to N because that's moles. And then temperature, 34 degrees Celsius. But we switch it to Kelvin. Yep. So we have to take the 34 plus 273.15. And what do you get? What do you add those to? 07.15. Okay. One other thing has to be converted. And what is that? The 212 kPa. So this is like, do you guys want me to show you how to convert that? We're back in chapter 13. Refresh our memory. Okay. So we're going to take the 212 kPa over 1. And then using all of our conversion stuff, we said 
one ATM is equal to 101.3 kPa is equal to 760 mmHg. So, to cancel the kPa, what am I going to put on the bottom? The 101.3. And then on top, what goes on top? 1 atm. So, with this equation, when you have to convert your pressure, it's always going to be 1 atm on the top. Always. Okay? Uh, so now, we just divide those two numbers, and what do you get for your pressure? 2.09-ish. Okay, that's fine. I don't really want to write down more. So, I'm going to say that equals 2.09 atm. So then I know I don't have to use that anymore. And I don't have to use that anymore. So now we can just go ahead and plug in and solve. So, it's going to be 2.09 times 0 0.148 equals n. Oops, sorry, I forgot the equal sign. And times R times, I ran out of room, 307.15. Sorry, I should have a bigger page. Do you guys want me to show all the steps you're solving? Yes? Okay, so can somebody tell me these two are multiplied equal? 0 0.309? Okay equals n times, what are those two things multiply? Okay. Now this is where people get really confused because they're like, um, that's a really small number and that's a really big number compared to it. Which one goes on top? The smaller number, the point three oh nine, because we need to get n by itself, so we have to divide both sides by the 25.204. So then, so you don't get confused, what is n equal to? One, two. Confirmed? Yeah. Is that incorrect significant figures? How many sig figs do you round to? Two for the 34. Does the zero before count? Does the zero right there count? So is that two sig figs? Yes. And our unit will be moles. So that's just if you have to plug stuff in and solve for moles, which you might have to do that on the one through three on the worksheet, okay? But now, the example five, we're going to have to deal with grams, and so we're throwing that in the mix now. So is it okay if I erase? Anybody still copy? Anything done? Okay. <coughs> so, a deep underground cavern contains 2.24 times 10 to the 6 liters of methane gas at a pressure of 14.8 atmospheres and a temperature of a 315 Kelvin. How many kilograms does the cavern contain? Um, okay, so let's figure out what we need to think. Do we have um, a pressure? Yeah, 14.8 atmospheres. Okay, um, do we have a volume? Mm -hmm. We're going to be dealing with big numbers, because that's a really big number, by the way. 2.24 times 10 to the 6 liters. Do we have a vol uh, number of moles? Are we solving for moles? Not necessarily. Okay. Uh, we'll skip that for now. R, we know that one, 0 0.08206, and temperature, 315 Kelvin. Hey, isn't that so nice that I gave you Kelvin in atmospheres already? Because this is going to have more work than what we think. Okay, so the question's asking for kilograms, correct? The only thing we don't have filled in in our equation is the number of moles. So we're going to have to solve for that because after we know the moles, then we have to go back to the mole map and go from the mole circle to the mass circle, okay? And then, can we go from mass, from grams to kilograms? 
if you know the conversion factor? Yeah. So that's our process here, is we're going to use the PV equals NRT first to solve for N, and then once we know N, our moles, then we have to convert it using mole map. Okay? So, let's plug and chug to find N first. So, we've got 14.8 times 2.24 EE6 equals N times R times 315. Do you guys need me to show it again? All the steps involved? No? Yes, no? Okay. When you get an N, yell it out. Let's, it's going to be a huge number, so let's just round it to a whole number for now. One, two, eight, two, five, three, zero. Somebody else get that? Yeah. yeah. Mine and my notes, I put it in scientific notation, and I had 1.28 times to the six. So I think that is correct. Okay. So that's our moles. So we took those multiplied. We took those multiplied and divided over. Now, we're not done yet, because now we have to go from moles to grams to kilograms. Okay? So I'm going to put my moles number over 1, just like we did back in Chapter 10, just like we did back in Chapter 12. Remember, when, I go, when we go from the mole circle to the mass circle, we're using molar mass. So it's grams per mole, one mole. So the one mole, is that going to go on top or on bottom for this next step? On the bottom, so that we can cancel out moles. Okay. And it's going to be grams on top. How am I going to find what goes on top? We have to use the molar mass of the CH4, the methane gas right here. So that's when you look at your periodic table, take four H's plus a C, what do you get? What'd you get? It should be like 16, because 12 plus 4. 0, 4, what? 3, 1, 5? If you had a little bit different, that's okay. Alright, then the moles cancel away. I'm going to just add it right now. Does anybody know how many grams are in a kilogram? There are 1,000. So I'm going to say 1 kilogram on top, because that's what I want. And I want to cancel grams away by putting 1,000 on the bottom. So then grams go away. I'm left with kilograms. So now we just take this times that divided by 1,000. And what do you get? Let's just, um, like... Let's just write it out to the whole number and then we'll think about rounding and things after we, because it's probably going to be pretty big still. So what did you get? Anybody? Anybody? What did you get? 20,570. 20, 74? Or 75 if you round a whole number? Okay, it's we're, it's gonna go away anyway, so it really doesn't matter. What'd you get? Seventy six. That's okay. It's gonna go away, because that's not the correct sig figs anyway, right? So there's two ways to round this to the correct sig figs. How many sig figs do we need? Three from all of our numbers in the problem. So um, I need to cut off after the five, the first five. So I'm. Uh, you could write it twenty thousand six hundred because that's twenty thousand five hundred and seventy five if you don't put the two zeros at the end that would just be two hundred and six and that's <coughs> not correct okay you need to have everything in the correct digit space so that's one way to label it for the answer or you can put in scientific notation so if we did scientific notation we count one two three four over so that would be two point oh six times ten to the fourth kilograms. That just is terrible. Uh, right here, 2.06 times 10 to the fourth kilograms. Okay.
Okay. That also gives us three sig figs. Either answer would be correct. All right. So we're going to start by doing the first three today. If we need to do one of the ones on the back on Monday, that is totally okay.